everyone, welcome back to my channel and if you're just stopping by for the first time, you're most definitely welcome. In this video, I'll be talking about the compensations or salaries here in Canada. And now this compensation, the salaries I'm talking about is literally geared towards the tech jobs, right? So these are salary bands that you should expect especially in data analytics. And now the whole point of this is for you to literally have an idea of how to bargain and your bargaining powers for what to write. Like, so before you even sign that job offer, do you have an idea of what's expected across, um, according to the market research or according to the market ranges for salaries in Canada? And one thing I would also love to also note and highlight is the fact that before you sign a job offer, I think there are a lot of things you should also understand, right? And one important thing is having to prioritize your personal well-being compared to, I mean, what you're taking home, right? So what I mean is, before you sign that job offer, I think about several things, right? Does it allow you to have a personal um, work-life balance? I mean, a lot of you say, talk about how that there really is nothing called a work-life balance, but I feel you can actually create that, right? So what I mean is, after you take out 95, do you log out or are you also constantly doing work? Also, before you sign that offer, do you also, and very importantly, is there like a budget allocated for your learning, right? I think this is something that I would always prioritize for anyone looking to even get a job or looking to even break into text. So what I mean is that, does your company have an allocation or does the company have an allocation for you to sign up for a course, take certifications or whatsoever, right? Is that available for you? Also, it's also very important to note that now this third point is based on my preference and it may not be your preference as well to write. So a lot of people talk about remote work, right? So you could be someone who really enjoy working from home or you typically would rather go and work on site or have a couple of days where you're going to work on site, right? Which is really good. I mean, I have a friend who soon spoke about the fact that, I mean, the moment um, they tell her to literally start coming to work on site, that's the she sent her resolution letter. But that's because of how um, a lot of these have, have, have happened these past few years. And people rather work from home than working directly on site in the company. I, for one, am a little more tilted towards um, work remotely, as well as also once, once or twice going to the office. Now, this is because there's really nothing as good as having that human interaction that I feel is lacking these days, right? Especially if you're just starting out in a career, it's literally of a very huge benefit to you. To have that human con connection with your colleagues or even your teammates as well too. So, and that way I sort of feel like you're also able to build that relationship, that work life building, that you're able to build that relationship that you really want in terms of like career goals and the likes. So yeah, this is based on my preference. I currently work in a remote job and um, I mean at no point are we ever my data to come to the office. I love that personal because I also have time to work on certain personal projects and also have time for myself, my family as well too. It's so, like an area that is actually up to also, one thing I want you to note is that the salary bands I'm talking about, um, they are just um, salary bands. What this means is that they're a range of values, right? And out of that um, salary you do receive here in Canada, you do a lot of deductions that come from your salary, right? So, if, for example, your annual, annual salary is about $100,000 um, in CAD, that's literally not what you'll be getting like annually, right? Because there are a lot of deductions that come with it. Your CPP, that's the, the Canadian Pension Plan. You also have your EI, that's your employee um, insurance as well too. There's also um, the R RRSP, which is your retirement savings plan. I mean, for after you retire, right? It's more like a savings plan for you, basically. So what I mean in essence is that if you receive an offer and it says $100,000, it's important for you to know what your take home is and I'm going to be doing an analysis using a particular website so whenever um, you have a salary that's dated in your in the offer letter you can go to this website and you can see what the deduction is like and I'll show you how to do that right about now so I punch in a hundred thousand in here and one thing you see is that you're literally seeing something called your gross income you have your annual um how much how much are you being paid are you paid hundred thousand annually um, where do you also work in because this tax is also different worlds, but then you have the federal taxes, right? So um, if I punch in a hundred thousand um, dollars Annually, I get my breakdown, but then here in Canada most times you actually receive your earnings by weekly So let's just put my weekly in here um, Oh, sorry annually here then I would choose by weekly the salary rate here and um, If I choose click by weekly and I click calculate I'm able to see what my bi-weekly paycheck is, right? So bi-weekly shows that with a, with a annual salary of about 800000 I'll literally have a net pay. That's a take home of about 
thousand dollars, ninety three dollars every two weeks, right? So I'm seeing a net fee of about seventy percent and a total tax of about thirty point zero percent. And now this tax um include like I mentioned your federal tax deduction. You also have your provincial tax deduction as well too. You have your CPP deduction and your employee insurance deduction, right? Now this provincial provincial tax deduction actually does vary based on where you're staying. I currently stay in Ontario, so this is a provincial tax deduction on a bi-weekly basis. Seems like a lot actually, but yeah, that's how it's been done here in Canada. So now let's jump right into tech salaries in Canada. And now note that these salaries will be ranked based on mid-level to high level, right? So a mid-level role is literally a role with an experience of about two to five years of working experience, whereas a high-level role literally um, is about five plus experience upward. So these are the salary bands for which I will be mentioning. So now the top five growing in-demand jobs according to future of jobs is data analyst and data scientist. You also have the AI as well as the machine learning specialist as well too. And you also have the big data specialist, which is the top job of in the in-demand jobs um, for 2023. You also have the strategy specialist as well as the process automation specialist as well too. So these are jobs and salaries that we focus on, but more especially for data and analytics, analytics rules, right? So now this salaries band will also give you like bargaining power when considering a job offer. Now the first on the list is data analyst and data scientist. So for a data analyst in your mid level, you should be expecting a range between 90,000 plus to about 113,000 plus, right? And whereas a senior level data analyst salary ranges from 112,000 plus to about 143,000 plus, right? So for those who have been asking, especially for those who want to move into Canada, this will change you an idea as to what to expect for whatever role and how many years of experience you have going. So moving on for a data scientist, for the role, the pay is typically higher, I mean, which makes sense, right? And now this is because data scientists are tasked with building predictive models also there's a lot of complex um, work that is being done like developing and implementing algorithms also designing experiments and also because there's actually a really high demand compared to a supplier at the moment for the show a data scientist rule at a mid level ranges from a hundred and eleven thousand plus so about 153,000 plus guys so even a senior level role begins from 136,000 plus upwards, right? Moving on to the AI and machine learning engineering snap salary. You're literally looking from a starting salary of about 190,000 to about 158,000. And a senior level starts from 142 upwards, which is actually pretty high. So now these salary ranges are specific to Canada, like I mentioned. So some of the skills needed for this role for AI and machine learning is um, more of machine learning modeling and data science skills typically. Also, you're working with tools like scikit-learn, TensorFlow, and, um, and this is just one out of the main data analysis skills and uh, data preparation and collection of knowledge you should even have in that school. The salary guide highlighted is just a representation of the real market conversation in major cities in North America, like Canada. If you have um, any questions or concerns as to how to even um, go about signing that job offer or even negotiating your salary, I can remember that even for I, for every single role I had to apply for, I actually had to bargain for the salary most especially because I knew that whatever they give you is not what is available. They have a budget for it, but then you also have um, an idea of what to expect, right? And based on the research I I I have, it made sense for me to bargain for something higher compared to what. Um, was given to me so definitely the HR had to go back and then send me a salary based on my personal interest right, and what I wanted. So now the salary guide highlighted is literally representation of the real market conversation in North America and Canada is one of the countries in North America. So thanks so much guys for watching. If you like this video, let, uh, let me know by giving it a thumbs up as well as also put down some questions. Whatever questions you have concerning these salary ranges, let me know. I know that the salary bands I mentioned actually all related to data specific roles like data science, data analysis, machine learning, AI, specialists, also, right? So next time, guys, have a very good day. Bye, guys.